Hi there. So in this in this video, I'm going to just clarify uh, a few uh, the meaning of a few keywords to you, and uh, uh, that that um, I've actually been asked about th th through sort of direct uh, requests, uh, direct messages, um, just asking about you know, can you do something on on root events. Uh, just just explain how these things all sort of fit together. So this is this is um, a map of London, as you can see, and, and I've got selected roads. I've I've got these selected roads sort of picked out via a display filter. I've done a display filter previously in a video, so uh, do sort of look that up. Um, so when I highlight this and go to feature layer display filters, I've got this filter going, um, uh, where its road number is A three one five or four zero two. I've only done that, so it's only displaying three one five four or two, just to just to clear the decks a bit, just just to you know declutter the map. That's the only reason I'm, I'm doing that. Now, but my my requirement here is I've I've got a list of emergency telephone locations, but I don't have the X Y, uh, and most importantly, there's a relationship between those uh, telephones, those emergency telephones, and this road, and that's really the geography of it. It's the, the emergency telephones are, are locked effectively to uh, every kilometre on this road. I haven't actually done every single kilometre, but I've done a sort of s several kilometres. And um, so one kilometre up, three one five, uh, another kilometre up, another kilometre up, sort of thing, and you get a position of an emergency telephone. Now these are points. I'm dealing with points only, so it's going to place a point. Uh, one one kilometer up the road, and then another kilometer up the road. Example, uh, for for example, uh, but you can do this as a line as well. So it may may start at one kilometer and finish at one point five. So so you can have line events as well, which is a, a just a subtle difference there. Um, well, subtle. It's a geometry difference. One's a point, one's a line. So let's just have a look at the table that I'm getting my measures from, and that's that's what they're called. So if I open this table. So you can see here, I've got, this was an imported CSV actually and made it as a table in this uh, basic um, project geodatabase. And, um, but it could actually come direct from Excel or, or you know, a worksheet, spreadsheet, um, just a raw CSV open in the project, you know, that, that sort of thing. Uh, but um, uh, the key things about it are you need some kind of identifier. So we know it's road. We know we're going to move along the road and position something. And where are we going to position it? Well, I've got this field called measure. It could be called anything. I've just called it measure, just to just you know self-explanatory. Uh, the default units are meters. So one kilometer. Um, and uh, there's actually two there. Um, sorry, one kilometer along the 402, one kilometer on the 315, then two kilometers along the 315. Three and then there's a little gap to five. I've just sort of done that deliberately. And then there's the A triple six, actually, which doesn't exist. There isn't an A triple six. So I've done that deliberately to show you what happens. You know, when it, when it, you can't find it, what the error handling is. And each one of these uh, has a sort of emergency telephone label. So I've made up this sort of telephone label. So you can see how there's no X Y for these emergency telephones. I'm not geocoding. I'm not creating points or whatever. I'm I, I've got a relationship between the road number and how far along how far along that road um, the telephone is so and and the way it's going to do that is through dynamic segmentation and that's the sort of process where where the position is computed that's really what dynamic segmentation uh, means you kind of work your way along the line and compute the location um, along the 315 or whatever so it's going to compute one kilometer um, sort of down the 402 up here and position and that's your dynamic segmentation so that, that's what that's called now the thing about this is you can't just straight away jump in and say well map this because you need a, a very specific uh, feature type feature class and that's called a root so you can only do this dynamic segmentation on a route. It doesn't matter if it's a point measure or a line measure. You, 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 you need a route. So what, what you do is um, back in, uh, if you go to the toolbox, you'll see, um, I mean, I've used this recently. So um, it's in a recent um, 
list of course. So I'm in geoprocessing tools, you see create routes, it's under linear referencing tools. If I just click that actually you can see. So here's the toolbox, linear referencing tools um, and create routes. Again this, this, this whole thing about routes sort of comes under the linear referencing um, sort of banner. So that, that, that's where this, uh, these words linear referencing um, sort of come from. It's all about referencing data to, to a line. Uh, so I click create route. Um, so what I need to do is turn the London A Roads GDB into a route, uh, a route sort of feature class. So a road number is what I need. And then um, I'm going to just call this, um, i just drop the route. So I call it, you know, route so I can see it clearly. Uh, it's just the length. Um, that's what I'm going going to, but we could pick up two values and then have a sort of from and to measure and stuff rather than one. But I'm just going along the length and, and, and um, positioning um, as we sort of move up the road. Uh, there's a few other measures and you can offset the point if you want. You know, you might have a, a meter off the road, for example. Um, maybe that's really where the telephone would be, but I'm not, not fussed. And I'm going to automatically build the index and ignore any 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 spatial gaps. It tells you a bit, obviously, when you um, hover the mouse point over the, the little eye, the information tool. So, you know, if there's disjointed routes and stuff, you can, you can sort of set what you want to do. So I'll just run this. So it's completed. And um, uh, as usual in the geoprocessing tool, it's put a little exclamation mark warning on the output feature class just to say, look, if you're going to do anything with this again, this feature class already exists. Uh, yeah, yeah, we know. Um, so what's happened, let's just go to base maps and refresh. So you see here, we've got this uh, new feature class, uh, Roots. So that's actually where the dynamic segmentation will take place. It doesn't actually kind of take place on, on the um, sort of original um, layer, should we call it. You see how in, in the um, content sort of list, layers list here, I've, I've got these two now. So I'll turn off um, GDB and stuff, which um, had the display filter. And in fact, um, we can, we could reapply that dis display filter, I suppose. Let's go display filter, disenable. New expression, create new expression, where right now is equal to, and, and, and it's going to, it was 315, wasn't it? You can easily. 315, or right number is equal to, and it was 402. Because I, I can see, see sort of down here, that's the only data I've got. Scroll do, I could have typed it in really, but. Um, Anyway, but as you can see, there's 402, but there's no uh, 666. Yep. So let's just apply that. And now it's decluttered the map. See, that's why dis display filter is actually pr pretty pretty neat. I, I use it quite a bit, actually. It's not selecting the data or anything. Anyway, so what, what we're talking about here now is we have... Um, there's a funny little kink there with the 402. Anyway, this is OSM, so... Uh, probably not the best data so um, so we have this so okay so now let's let's place these points um, with dynamic segmentation so the way you do that now is to select again under the linear um, referencing tools is make root event layer so this is points of course we're, we're, we're going to be dealing with with linear points so th there's only one option in that drop down list and that is Roots. It'll take a moment while it just kind of scans through that and um, uh, looks at the data. Um, the root identifier field is is road number. That's, that's what I'm going to be matching against this road number in my measures table. Now the events come from um, it's not in the list. Because actually, I, I don't have it. I don't have this in in the layers. So if I'd added this effectively into the project, 
um, it would be listed. So um, two ways I can do this, I can either just click browse and go to it or indeed just add it to the layers list but I won't, I'll go straight to it from here. So my base maps and uh, there we go, measures for root point events. See what I mean? I hadn't added it as a table into the list here, into the layers list contents. If it was there, then it would have been available in my drop down list. So that sort of scans that and has a look. Um, and then this drop down arrow appears. It's read the table and you've got road number. Okay, so we're matching road number against that. So there's a sort of, you know, um, compare, sort of um, geocoding mapping by, by road number going to going to happen but there's going to be a position so um, the event type is a point most definitely uh, now the measure field so this is the measure so this is my measures table the sort of events table is literally called measure so that's my 1000 1000 2000 these are my meters so one kilometer three kilometer five kilometer so measure field is that so uh, layer name I'm going to create well let's just call it um, get rid of that make it a bit more so measures for point events. So let's let's say um, telephone. Actually, it's emergency, isn't it? Emergency telephone. And I'm I'm going to keep point events in the name because so I know where it came from. Um, there's no offset needed. There may be an offset value, you know, to to push it to one side. It may identify an angle, you may want to record that, um, and if it's positive it's on the right hand side of the route, we're not using any of that. But um, I will generate a field for errors. Um, you, you, you can have multi-point features, um, but oh, I didn't select that. There you go. I generate a field for locating errors. There you go. Um, so let's run that. It does a lot of reading up here with those dots flying by. Still doing it up there. Obviously, have a good think. I'll just pro does that quite a bit, and you do wonder actually what is it thinking about. Anyway, let's run. So it's pretty quick. So the dynamic segmentation is um, uh, let's clear this is 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 rather quick. So let let me just let me just change the icon here to. something um, I don't know actually perhaps not that perhaps that though that's cool not bad at all drive you crazy eventually obviously but for the purpose of this uh, just tutorial it's probably useful so let's uh, actually let's turn on some labeling label properties um, it's not interested in row number we're interested in the label the telephone label I've set the properties but I haven't actually turned on the uh, label. There you go. Let's just save this project. So that's telephone 4021. So that's on the 4021. So let's just zoom in a bit. So you can see now how we've got these points. So that's one kilometer up the road. So this one, oh, um, which is um, two kilometers up the road. Um, so what was that? 3152. So that is that one. Three one five two. Yep. So if we just get rid of the events for us. So um, yeah. So you can see what those are and where they're positioned and how they're calculated. So this one. Um, so that one three one five four is obviously gone five clicks up the road. I mean you can do a quick um, measure here. forget which tab things are on. So still getting used to the ribbon menu system. I'm not sure I like it. Never did. Anyway, um, so it's going to be, um, what's that one? Sorry, that's five clicks. So um, yeah, that's five clicks. That's correct. So approximately um, with my sort of freehand measuring, 3154. Yeah, it's about five clicks. So um, the, the, the thing to sort of see here is well well what happened to all this data well if we just open this table 
So these are the this is actually these red sort of bouncing arrows because the uh, events table itself is now being used, you see. That, so we don't really need that anymore. So what, what we do have is this events table. So this is what actually is kind of mapped. So you see when I click it, it highlights. So that's 3152. But see our recorded errors. So the only one it's got back here is root not found. So I, I so and that's correct. It should, it should be happening. So it has a nice little error handling. So what's the what, what, what's the key thing about about this? Apart from okay, that's great. We can position we can position laybys of a particular length and you know emergency parking or something, all that sort of thing. That's great. But the point is the relationship is between the road and the point now. So how can we take advantage of that? Well, if that line gets updated, so does the event. So the point moves with it because it's locked. It's got that relationship. So if you can imagine if you're a water company and you've got a valve, um, not just the XY could be used to position that valve uh, because it's attached to a pipe uh, or an asset, then you, you, you could say, well, actually, I know that you know 50.5 meters down this pipe is this valve. Um, so if the pipe moves, so does the valve. I mean, there's other topological um, ways of handling that. Of course, there are, uh, um, you know, in network topology, utility network, or whatever. But this is this is that's just an example. So what what we can do is actually change the measures. So if we change, see this first one here, one thousand. Um, where's my labels gone? Hang on. um, actually, it's, it's interesting what's happened there. Okay, so if we were to change a measure, so you see you've got the first one there is at uh, um, on 305 is, is that one. See it's highlighted. Let's change it. Let's set this to just 500. And there you go. It immediately drops back um, that distance. Of course, one thing we can do is kind of really sort of force it off the map almost. Let's do 20,000. And then you get this error message, look. Because it's root measure not found. So you could have root not found and root measure not found. It's gone off the map. 20,000 um, meters is far too um, much. Let's put it back. There we go. It's recovered. Okay, let's zoom in a bit. Um, let me just turn off that display filter. Um, get rid of that. Sort of bring everything back. Um, and there's been a sort of change to this piece of road or this pipe, whatever it is, whatever line object it is. So we'll uh, just select it. So this is a 315, and then we'll uh, modify it, so we'll edit the vertices, let's move it, I don't know, it, did, it does this now, that road. Uh, job's good, and look what's happened. So I finished the edit, and it's now moved the point um, it's kept it locked to the road, and and that's really the key sort sort of part of all of this. It's it's um, very much locked to the road. So when the road, the line, um, is updated, the location of that event will also change, and that's it's you know that's linear referencing sort of working because of that relationship. So there you go. Hopefully that um, answers uh, your questions about point events at least about events and uh, linear referencing, uh, dynamic segmentation. And I hope you find that useful. Thank you.